We're gonna go to the year 2009 for this video, and we are going to revisit a heated argument that NBA fans had for quite a while, which was, who's the better player, Kobe Bryant or LeBron James? Unfortunately, these two never met in an NBA Finals, but this year was the closest they ever came, as Kobe Bryant and his Lakers reached the NBA Finals and eventually defeated the Orlando Magic, whereas LeBron's Cavs lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. So we're going to find out what would happen if these two teams went off, but let's uh, dive into these two teams a bit more. You know Kobe Bryant. Pau Gasol is also a very good offensive option who can hit for mid-range, who can post up and be just a very good second guy next to Kobe. And there's also a slew of other guys who know what they're doing as well. And these Lakers would defeat the Denver Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals to get here off the back of a huge three-pointer by Kobe in Denver. He is created, so you're going to have to give me a little bit of a break on the face. And for the Cleveland Cavaliers, well, the only other real offensive option besides LeBron is Mo Williams. And we saw that when they eventually lost in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Magic. LeBron had a fantastic series, averaging well over 30 points a game, but his teammates around him were just simply not up to the task and as we know this would continue and not much longer LeBron would decide to leave this team but for this moment he was really trying to carry these guys he was unable to do it against the Magic but in this scenario let's just say it happens his Cavaliers get through Orlando and then they meet in the NBA Finals with the Los Angeles Lakers this is going to be a Cleveland with the home court advantage because they had the better record in the regular season by one game. And I think some key things to look at is, are the Cavaliers going to be able to handle these two big guys for the Lakers? I mean, Ilgauskas and Anderson Verjao are the two big guys playing the majority of the minutes for the Cavs. Who knows, are they going to have the uh, rim protection and athleticism to really uh, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pau Gasol and Andrew Bynum? And then for the Cavaliers, it's simply, who's going to step up besides LeBron? Who is going to be that other offensive piece who the defense has to respect? Oh, and also, don't freak out about their records. I had to put the simulator at zero to make sure they would both get here. The Cavaliers still have the better record, as I mentioned, which would have happened in real life. So let's dive into this thing. Game one, the Lakers win it in a blowout. My goodness. LeBron definitely showed up, and Kobe had himself quite a game as well with 30 points. So the star players showed up in game one, which they both did what we expect them to do. Kobe is one of the most versatile as well as relentless scorers the NBA has ever seen. But he also got a really quality performance out of Trevor Ariza as well. And unfortunately for LeBron, there weren't too many surprises in game one in the sense of no other teammate really had themselves a big game and if that maintains itself, I don't know if they can win 2-0 now for the Lakers. Looking scary for the Cavs. LeBron once again having a fantastic game. And actually a balanced attack for the Lakers this time. So this is not good, man. The Cavaliers lose both of their games in Cleveland. The star players just looking around going, can one of you guys just make a basket or just do something to help me out here? Because... They beat us pretty handily these first two games, and I mean, I just need someone else to step up. For the Lakers, they had a, a lot of assists. It was really a team game. Kobe didn't have to carry them in this one. He only finished with 19 points, and it was still a blowout. And that was the danger of the Lakers. They had so many guys who were just quality basketball players to where Bryant didn't necessarily have to go off every game. Of course, what made them nearly unbeatable at this time was Kobe, but having so many good players is just very difficult to deal with. Game 3 in LA. I mean, it's got to happen now for LeBron and the Cavaliers. If they don't win this one, you're down 3-0. I think that would be a wrap. Okay, it's 2-1. They're not dead just yet. No big game from Kobe Bryant. And then LeBron with a huge game, but Mo Williams with a very clutch 26 points and 11 assists. So LeBron showed up, as we expect him to. It's been... Every game this series so far, he has not disappointed as he uh, had, I mean, what, 36 points as I mentioned before? Now you may remember that this is in the thick of the Skip Bayless versus LeBron days. LeBron didn't give Skip much material to work with for this game, but the work is definitely not done just yet as his team is now still down 2-1. 
Now, we saw LeBron pull off a miraculous comeback in real life recently against the Warriors. Perhaps he's going to do the same thing here, but he's still going to need some more help from his teammates. Mo Williams showed up for this one. I think that's the key, is if the other guys can just keep on uh, maintaining that level of play in this one. But the Cavaliers, they blew the Lakers out in this one, so they came out with a purpose. But let's see if they can tie this thing up. Or is the Lakers going to take a commanding lead? Oh boy, this is a tie series. Kobe definitely did all he could. 13 for 20 for 30 points. And what the hell? Mo Williams as well as Delonte West were actually the killers of the Lakers in this one. Delonte with 20 points. And then Mo with 27. Is he in running for finals MVP right now? 27 points for Mo Williams, including six three-pointers. I mean, this backcourt of... I mean, these guys aren't too far away from being role players, especially in the sense of Delonte West. Mo is more of a starter, but even though Kobe is doing what he can do, those two are just killing them. I mean, you're not even going to see a LeBron James highlight for this game four because LeBron, while still having a good game, he didn't really need to go off. And so Kobe is going to have to rally the troops together because they just lost both games in L.A., and this is now only a three-game series in Cleveland for Game 5, and the Cavs have just won three in a row. And once again, LeBron James, not the huge reason for it, still good, but the Lakers officially do not know how to deal with Delonte West and Mo Williams. I mean, both of these guys hit a flurry of three-pointers, and, I mean, who do we blame here? The Lakers have a lot of quality defensive perimeter players, but these two are still going off. James, while still being damn good, he's not been the big point guy for the Cavaliers so far, or at least in the last couple of games. Pau Gasol gave Kobe some help with a solid 16 and 10, and Bryant is maintaining his big scoring in this series. But uh, we're going back to LA, and the Cavaliers actually have a chance to close this thing out. So Kobe and the crew are going to have to show up for this one. And if we look at what happens in this Game 6, they force a Game 7. This is the ideal ending, I would imagine. That was a blowout and a half. Kobe with 38. LeBron had himself more of a normal game as Delonte West and Mo Williams came back down to earth. And I'm pretty sure from the jump here, Kobe was like, we're not losing a Game 6 in our building to give these guys the championship. 38 points. That's a classic Kobe Bryant game, if I ever remember one. There's been a decent amount of blowouts in this series, but the Lakers were wasting no time at all in this one. I, I have to imagine every single bounce went their way, given how lopsided of a final score this was. It's a Game 7. What's going to give? Is LeBron James going to defeat Kobe, or is the veteran going to capture another championship? Game 7 in Cleveland. The Cavaliers won one more game in the Lakers, and that's huge to... Have the deciding game be on your home court. And I have to imagine that the tension and the intensity was just fuming at this point. Of course, Kobe Bryant in a big game, you have to imagine that he's going to give just a ridiculous amount of effort. He'll be snarling, he'll be yelling at his teammates, he'll be hitting some crazy shots, diving on the floor. I mean, Kobe's one of the clutch players in NBA history for a reason. But what's going to happen in this game seven? My god, LeBron James and the Cavaliers did it. 42 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists for LeBron. Kobe, a very good game still, although for a game 7, it seems that James just got the better of him. Listen, if you don't like this result, don't get mad at me, it's just 2K, alright? I'm just here to walk us through this whole thing. But, it seems that LeBron, in the big moment, just had himself an all-time performance. Game 7 in Cleveland, over 40 points. He was able to stare Kobe Bryant in the face and actually overmatched him. Which I'm sure... I mean, LeBron at the age of, what, 23 or 24 years old in this? I'm sure not many of us would have expected this. Again, this is only 2K, of course. But LeBron was a fantastic player nonetheless. A hell of a series, man. LeBron James nor Kobe Bryant disappointed. They both did what we expected them to do. 
but some role players also stepped up and the big question for the Cavs really was could the other guys do enough? They definitely could. LeBron James brought him home in the end. Well, it was a hell of a series, man. If only we could have seen it in real life, you know? If only we could have seen two of the top guys in the NBA who people argue about to this day who is the better player. Would have been a hell of a thing to see him go at it in this setting. At least we have this, I guess. Thank you very much for watching, and we can look at LeBron's finals MVP stats. He definitely showed up.